All right, we are rolling. Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is a, a buddy of mine. I've known him for, I think, maybe 10 years or something like that. Uh, and uh, I've uh, I've seen this guy grow tremendously as an artist and go in different directions than I ever thought he was going to go, uh, which is really cool to see. And his work is super inspiring. Um, he's a super awesome dude, very nice. And I can't wait to, to hear what he's what he's got going on. So everyone, please welcome Jesse Winchester Schmidt. <laughs> oh, holy shit! It's Jason Siler, damn, it's in the yeah. flesh, Skype. <laughs> Good to see you, dude. Thank you for uh, that very kind intro. It's a trip for me, man. I've been uh, a big fan of yours for over a decade, and uh, you know, I've been your, I've been your student. I've attended your workshops, and I, you know, I also took your your ten week course. Uh, so uh, this is a trip, man. It's uh, it's an <laughs> honor and a pleasure. Yeah, man. I'm glad to have you on, man. I, you know, it's just funny because I've been the first time I met you. Gosh, I I was trying to remember. I think it was maybe 2010, something like that. Yeah, that's probably. And, um, I was and, thinking uh, 09 or 10, something like that. Vancouver yeah. Schoolism. Yeah, you know what? Which I, I, I was hosting at the time. Yeah, I think it was in 09. Yeah. Um, and it was my first workshop that I ever did, and you were oh, basically wow. like the guy trying to make sure everything was was going well, and yeah, and um, it didn't go well. Like, no, it was, you, it, there was a couple of things that were kind of yeah. weird, but and you were like running all over town trying to get parts for things. It was nuts. Yeah, it was okay. nuts. If, but, if anything goes wrong, it's going to be technology, and, and we had yeah. technical issues behind the scenes. So I'm, I'm glad on your end it wasn't <laughs> uh, catastrophic. Oh, no, it actually was it – was, it was, I had a great time. I thought it was awesome. Good. But Good. that's the first time we met in person, and, um, and, uh, and we, we've only got to hang out a couple times since. Like I, it was, I yeah. saw you in Pasadena, which was great. Um, yeah, Toronto once. Do you remember that? that? That was probably like five, six years ago. We hung out in yeah, Toronto yeah, at, a, yeah. at a schoolism thing. We went out for uh, Italian food and oh, yeah, went yeah, for yeah, drinks yeah. after. Oh, that, that's right. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, yeah, did was... we did we go to the wine tasting that time yeah. with um with Louis Gonzalez? Remember yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the wine connoisseur guy was like super uptight. He's telling <laughs> trying to tell us like, oh, you have to roll the glass, and then Louis was like drinking the wine too soon, and he's like, hey, I told you you have to smell the wine first. Like, Whoa, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. settle down. That was fun. No, that was that was, that was, that was fun, man. With yeah. that that was a great time. We had we had the. Uh, um, like Bobby Chu, like set up the whole thing. We had like the uh, four course meal or whatever, and they brought out the wine. That was so much fun, man. Bobby Chu, oh, yeah. Man. Bobby Chu. Oh, Bobby, Bobby Chu. fucking Chu. Yeah, um, Jay Z, the art game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's, it's just really been cool for me. I'm like watching you because, like, when I first met you, you were, you know, you were doing like some character design stuff, some caricature mm-hmm. stuff, and um, and you were always good, but you're always like pushing yourself and like taking it you know just going in different directions the, the thing i always liked about you as just as, as a person at a whole is you always have this like kind of uh passion within you where you, you just want to take things to the next level and you just push and push and push and that's really you know one of the reasons why i wanted to talk to you about this because i think it's very important uh, for anybody out there that wants to make it as an artist that it's it's all about the the effort you know it's it's it sounds so cliche, like you, you got to try harder, man. But like the truth is, is there are so many people out there that that kind of just give up, you know, because it is it is difficult, especially when you're trying to make it in the industry, um, facing deadlines and that sort of a thing. But in the last couple years, um, you took your work in a completely different way than I was expecting. Um which is doing the, the, the plein air type landscape paintings. Um, and I'm bl- I, to, I just be, to be honest, I'm very blown away, inspired by them. I really, you know, cause first of all, my dad does plein air painting. Uh, yeah, I know. And, um, I'm, I'm so a fan. I've watched him for years and everything else. And you, you're, I really, you know, I've, I've seen so many plein air paintings, so many artists, um, and there's a lot of amazing plein air painters out there, yes. but there's kind of also, you know, 
sometimes plein air for me gets really boring. Um, it's like, you know, it's just I've, you kind of just like, oh, I've seen that thing, the same thing over and over and over again. Um, but there's a few artists out there that just I see their work. I'm like, oh, man, that like it just like speaks to me like Richard Schmidt or different people that just like like you just see it. And you're like, OK, that guy is speaking a different language that I want to learn, you know, and that's yeah. what I'm seeing with what you're doing. And it's really cool, man, because you, you you've, you've got really cool compositions, but also just one thing I really appreciate, too, is that you're using gouache, right, for most yeah. of it. Yeah. And there's something about the way that you're handling it that it's like very sculpted the brushwork feels very um uh, it's not you're not just like whipping shit around like everything seems very uh purposeful and mm -hmm. you're, you're directing the eye around but there's like really beautiful shapes and contrast and um so i'm just interested to, just to hear about what's been going on with this man like what's been your mm -hmm. passion and your wow your direction with it because it's I, I think it's awesome man i love it cool well thank you so much man i, I mean I mean, so much to me. I, I feel like there's so much to talk about there. Um, I, I kind of want to backtrack to where you started that, um, you know, recognizing effort and, and sort of encouraging artists out there that, that that's a really crucial component to this thing that, that we're doing. Um, that's one thing I'll give myself is, is I've always been a hard worker. Um, but I think with me, I spent a long time working really hard and not really seeing good results. Mm. And, and the problem was there was a missing part to the equation. And, and to me, it's hard work times efficient learning strategies or effective learning strategies. So I, I didn't have that second part. And so my wheels were spinning for years. And, and that's really dangerous. You know, it, it's, it's one thing to not make progress if you're half-assing it because you always have that excuse. But if you're mm -hmm. fully invested and you're, you're looking around and seeing like, man, I'm putting in more hours over years and I'm consistent and I'm, and I'm not really getting anywhere. You know, it doesn't, I'm not feeling it. People aren't feeling it. That's a dangerous place to be. And I, I was there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so then the, the real turning point was schoolism for me, taking particularly taking the feedback courses, um, you know, working with artists of that caliber, such as yourself, and having their direct, honest, critical feedback uh, was a game changer. And, you know, the, the range of teachers that I, I think I've done like six now through Schoolism, six 10-week uh, courses, and, and this is always while I'm, I'm working full time, um, you know, that that unique combination of teachers um, has really, really helped me out. The first one I took was Dice Tsumi and Robert Kondo is one of the lucky 10 that actually got into their their feedback course. Um, and they they started the whole thing off saying, like, we hope this is a launch pad and, and sort of a jump start for a continued passion. And they they taught a lot about painting and lighting and color directly. But the best thing I got out of that was like efficient, effective learning strategies. The way they broke it down into, I think what's called chunking, where, where you're, you're focused on components um, of the skill set that you're aiming for and, and you're uh, mm. using exercises that really sort of, you know, laser focus on just values. Um, and then you can, you know, you start building up those those individual skills into, you know, a broader um, ability. Um, and then, you know, you start to see artistry come out. And, and that feeling is so addictive and it, it feels so good um, to start having things happen a little easier. Um, I think something else happened for me o over the last little while is like I, I found I found something that that feels really good in my heart. You know, plein air painting really resonates with me for a lot of reasons. And for a long time, all the way through college, you know, five plus years into my career, um, I, I didn't, I think I was trying to do what I thought I was supposed to do. And I was listening to other people too much. And I, mm. you know, I, I thought, oh, I, I work in animation, you know, you have to draw characters, you have to digital paint, that's, that's the way. 
Um, and, and I tried to force it and I enjoy those things to be honest. Um, but I remember way back in, in college, I, I loved gouache back then. And, and even I remember the first time I technically plain air painted was in like elementary school. And I remember how stoked I was. And in college, uh, my, my painting teacher wasn't encouraging and, um, it just, it wasn't a thing. Like I didn't know what plain air painting was. And people, no one ever like pulled me aside and was like, hey, man, like you show promise in painting, you should pursue that more. I just kept trying to pursue other things that and, you know, social media is so beneficial in so many ways. But I'd look online and be like, oh, these are the things that are really popular. These are the things I need to pursue. And, and that's totally wrong for me. It's more like, mm -hmm. who am I? What am I passionate about? And what value can I bring to the table? Um, and, and that's what people are going to connect with. But it doesn't happen overnight. We, you know, we know that. It's like part of the benefit of following your heart is then it's worth the challenges. And, and you know, the determination is going to be there um, because the reward is, is so close to your heart. If you're pursuing, you know, something that means that much to you. Um, yeah. So, you know, I found better teachers and I started to see these little glimpse glimpses of hope where it's like, oh, shit, maybe I could be a painter. And I started, you know, putting a little more effort into it mm. and started getting positive feedback. And it's like, well, maybe that's what I should be doing. And then at a certain point, it's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm in. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. And I and. You know, I, I have a day job in the animation industry and that's there, but I'm going to really turn on the jets on the side and see if I can learn about painting. Mm -hmm. um, gouache was my choice because it, it is really um, quick and portable. Um, and because I, I have a pretty busy day job um, and now a baby or a toddler, uh, it fits into small uh, windows of time really nicely. So... Uh, that's kind of the turning point as I as I see it. And, and you know, hopefully I have a lot of years of, of learning um, and dedication ahead of me. Um, but I, I definitely see a turning point in, in my career and my development in the last you know five years or so. And I'm so grateful. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I stuck it out and, and and got to that moment where it started to feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know, because because there was definitely moments, you know, definitely oh, yeah. moments where it's like, man, am I being is it like stupid for me to do this anymore? But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what else, man? Like, yeah, <laughs> for me, it's like family and art. Like, what what else is this life going to be about other other than those things? Those things I believe in. I, I don't know much else that I can believe in. And, and those are great things to believe in. And under family, of course, I, I count close friends. Um, yeah health as well you know those are the big ones so yeah that's that's kind of uh what's gone on with me i think and then there's been all these plein air is awesome man like i it's so exciting it's so fun and there's so many hidden um benefits to it you know the obvious one was like um learning light and color and i, I had a great art director years ago boris andreev um who's a, a russian he was he grew up in Soviet Russia and he was trained in Soviet art schools. And now he's out here. He's an amazing uh, art director. He works in feature and, and television. And I, I worked under him for like three years and uh, I started to do color keys on the cartoon we were working on. I was like, man, I, I love doing these color keys. Um, and he, he was always very honest and very encouraging. And he'd say, well, that's good, Jesse, but uh, your sense of color is pretty shit. So if you want to do this, you must go outside and paint, my friend, comrade. Uh, yeah. He didn't call me comrade, but I like to think that he did. Um, so he <laughs> told me to go outside and paint. And, and so I did. And I sucked. Uh, but it felt good. And it was fun. So the first thing was like, I'm going to do this to learn light and color. And that's going to help my animation work. And sure, it has. And it, it will continue to do that. Um, one of the the first surprises I got out of it, which of course is an ongoing journey, is, is it helps with design so much because 
it's you there's so many limitations in plain air you know you have a time limitation um you know the lights changing um gouache dry, dries pretty quickly i don't spend much more than an hour it's usually more like 30 minutes to an hour on a, on a plain air sketch um so there's those constraints um and then the, i think the big one in any plain air painter uh has to find a way to tackle this be it oil gouache whatever is the complexity that we see out there is overwhelming. You know, that that's, yeah. you get hit with that tidal wave when you start getting into plain air and it, it is, it can be crippling. So to get over that, you're forced to figure a way out. Um, and to me, it's design. It's like the, the solution to that is, what is it that I'm trying to say? What is it that attracts me to what I'm looking at? What's the real message? Uh, Nathan Folks calls it the simple statement. Uh, whatever that is, you know, that's up for us to decide. And then you commit to that, and every decision is weighed against that intention. So that, to me, that's design, and that's what I do in animation as an art director. Um, is we tell stories, and there's always limitations there too. There's there's deadline limitations, and um, you know, my skill set is a limitation. So it's like. I need to understand the intention of the script and, and what I'm trying to get across to the audience. How do I want them to feel? And if I ask the audience, hey, what just happened and how do you feel about that? I need for me to really effectively communicate that with them. So that that's super parallel to plain air and, and mm -hmm. plain air is like weightlifting for that design sense of, of, totally. yeah. of working with intention. Um, and I, I really, really enjoy that. So that that's been a really nice surprise. That's awesome, man, and that's an that's an amazing explanation. Uh, you know, it, it I I can completely relate. I to me, plein air painting is um, I don't get to do it very often, or I don't go out and do it as much as I'd like to. Um, I there was a period of time where I was doing it a lot, um, and just around I I was it was more like urban painting yeah. like i just i was went around in chicago in the city with my little planner box and did like little oils but i would do like 20 30 minutes um and it was never it's just like what you're what you're saying it, it was never for the purpose of hey i'm trying to do a painting i want to sell to somebody it was always like this is very difficult but i know i'm learning a lot i'm learning a lot about painting yeah. I'm, I'm learning how to problem solve yeah um it's funny though, like I go with my dad um, every once in a while when I go up to Wisconsin and I'll go plein air painting. But uh, it's most of the time I go with him, I, I just I get so annoyed um, because it's that thing where, you know, the lighting is changing so quickly. So and, fast. And that's the one thing that I figured out is what you're saying is, and I figured this out mostly from watching my dad do it is, oh, wait a minute. He's not actually painting what's there right i'm trying to paint what's there yeah and it's almost impossible because yeah. of of the it first of all i'm getting eaten it's alive by mosquitoes or the bugs are eating you alive and yeah. i'm just sitting there i'm like god damn like the whole time getting pissed off and i'm trying to like you know do capture the scenery just right uh, but everything's changing so quickly. The lighting, every five seconds, the lighting's different. I'm just like, what the, you know? And then I go over and I look at my dad's painting, and my dad's, my dad's doing a, a fantasy painting. Like, yeah. I'm like, and it, it looks awesome. And I'm, but but it's like he's created this awesome design, and he's yeah. looking at what he sees. But he's he's like almost just, in a way, caricaturing what he's seeing and taking it to some yeah. other place, um, including the color. Like he'll decide, hey, I'm mm. going to use this kind of palette. And I'm not going to stray from this palette. And I don't care if that tree is that color. I'm going to be using these colors. And so the first few times I was watching them, I was so confused. Um, but then I started to realize, like, oh, okay, this is about, you know, not, it's not about copying what you're seeing exactly. It's about, you know, interpreting and, like, taking it someplace, you know, original. And it's about light, how to capture light and atmosphere yeah. and the composition. You know, like, I remember one time... Um, I was with my dad and, and he, uh, there, there was like these trees and there was, there was a few different things in the composition that just, you know, not in his painting, but in, in the scenery that just were like, you know, eh. And I was painting, like, I was like, this is what I'm painting. And I go over to look at his painting and none of the stuff's in his painting. He just moved things <laughs> over. And I'm like, 
Or with all the trees and stuff. He's like, oh, I didn't like the way it looks, so I'm just not going to paint that stuff. And Oh, that's great. So it's just funny because I it, I was not thinking of it that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, I always think of plein air painting for me as um, – uh, like I'm, I'm hoping to try to do it more just because I do know it, it helps so much as an artist. Yeah. But it it feels like going going back to school basically in a way every time because yeah. it kicks your ass every time. But yeah, see, here's the thing. Your, how big are you doing yours? They're like eight, they're eight by ten or my panels. Um, oh, okay. But it, so I'll do eight by ten if it's like diffuse light or midday. Um, so I know I have like an hour window where it's not going to change drastically. Um, but then some of the biggest challenges are the like fifteen minute golden moment. You know oh, where yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's changing so fast. It's so <laughs> beautiful. That. <laughs> then I, I, I'll work as small as like two by three inches with, with a one inch brush. So you're um, just trying to like, just that man, a, that's pretty it's awesome. It's really a gesture. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's, that's it's, awesome. It's so hard and it's so, yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's so, that's so fulfilling though, man. That's like such a fun thing. Um, and what kind of, um, paper are you working on? Are you going to, is it like a thicker board? Yeah, I got a few that I really like. So my eight by ten panels, I use a matte board. So it's actually the the board that you um, cut to matte paintings with that goes behind oh, glass. Okay. But the thing is, it's archival, so it's acid free, and uh, it comes in a variety of colors. So I, I like working on a warm uh, light value. It's like a light mid tone, quite warm, mm. um, and, and that's a really nice base. Um, and for some reason, the, the gouache just really takes to that surface really, really nicely. That's nice. And then, and then I, your I whites also, are just going to pop off that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, there, there's pros and cons to working on white versus, uh, you know, a, a toned background. But yeah, it, it's definitely fun to work on tone, I find. Like you, you, you said, it, it, yeah, it lets you, um, you pop those whites. Do you. Uh, because because it's gouache and it's it's you know you you can paint very thin with it if you want to. Do you do like thin washes like an underpainting, or do you just kind of start going in mm. um, opaque? Yeah, it's taken me a while to figure out what I like to do. Um, I I do wash sometimes, but generally speaking, my strategy, my approach is is pretty alla prima. I'm I'm trying to go straight to the finish with with one pass on everything. Now, it doesn't always work that way. You know, often some things will need a little uh, nudging here and there, but the approach is, is essentially to go from a very basic drawing, you know, we're talking like maybe 10 lines of just sort of dividing up the composition with, with the eye level established, um, going from that to like the finished painting without going over anything. And do you do the sketch uh, with with paint or do you sketch yeah, it with, with pencil? with paint, with a paintbrush. And, I, and uh, there, I think there's very few rules in, in painting, but, you know, if, if there's any rule, I, I would say it's hold the brush far back. That that was like a revolution to me because I, I, I never, there was a few years where I was plein air painting without any formal plein air painting um, instruction. And I, I was choking up on the brush, like right up to the, to the tip. Um, and it, mm. it's kind of like in life drawing where if, you know, if you hold the yeah. Conte like a pencil, your, your drawing looks a certain way. And if you hold it, you know, like this and, and draw with your shoulder rather than your wrist, um, you can control your curves a lot more. You loosen up, uh, your, your lines become more expressive and, and that's the same long, long handled brushes are long so that you can hold them back and, and, and stand away from the painting and, and reach out, um, and it, it just becomes a lot more gestural. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I draw with the brush. Um, really, you, really simple drawing. And then just jump into the final. And thing. do you usually start with like a sort of like a like a burnt sienna or something light like that? Yeah, it depends. It, it depends. But, yeah, usually like burnt sienna or like a warm, saturated um, color. And then if I'm working on a colored base, then essentially my drawing and the surface are warm and light. And then when I'm painting over that, I'll, I'll let that poke through here, mm. here and there and vibrate against, especially in, in the cool areas to have that vibrate with cools a little bit is, is really nice. That's cool. Yeah. Now, being that it's gouache and it does dry quickly, um, are you, so there's a, there's a couple questions I have with it, but just because gouache can be 
a medium that turns a lot of people away. It can be yeah. tricky for, you know. Yeah. And uh, so are you mixing like huge piles? Um, mm. uh, I tend to, when, I, when I'm usually doing gouache stuff, I usually just have like little squirts. I mean, are you using like out of tube or are you using like out of tube. um yeah okay yeah. I usually just have like little squirts but I'm I'm not doing like big areas at a time I'm usually you know I do I do a combination of like washes and opaque mm -hmm. you know um mm -hmm. so I'm curious about that because one thing that you were saying is that you you do try to kind of you know just lay it down right away like the correct value color right away yeah um what like a lot of times with gouache you can um it, it can be really tricky because it'll pull from a, if you go over another thing you can pull the color out from another yeah it reactivates it, it, it can be so frustrating and turn into mud and yep. um how do you deal with that kind of a thing does that ever i mean you i mean you can you can keep painting over it but i mean yeah it doesn't look good if you do though yeah it's that's what it i'm saying it's very really touchy worked. yeah 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 that that can be tricky um gouache definitely has its idiosyncrasies and that's one of them that it reactivates um so um kind of like oil um the the fat over lean thing um you know you if if you are going to do both washes and thick uh, opaque painting um generally you're going to start with washes and build up yeah um, now with me when i i tend to charge in with thick creamy gouache mixes um so it, it does it, the thing is i'm not painting over anything so i'm not reactivating but yeah. the paint will react to what's next to it um and that's that's where it feels like a bit of a dance um and and what really affects that is the humidity when i when i was down in lightbox painting there was like a completely different ball game because it's so hot and humid yeah. the paint was drying so quick and you can see in in California gouache plein air painters, they dry brush more. Mm. Whereas where I'm from in Vancouver, it rains all the time. It's very humid here. Um, so I, I get a lot more wet on wet. So humidity is such a huge factor in, in gouache painting. It really affects how the paint handles a lot. Um, so it, if it's really humid, like sometimes I'll paint in the rain in a canyon with a waterfall and it, it's 100% humidity. So anything mm -hmm. is getting wet even if it like it's not touching rain it's everything's wet all the time so in that case i barely use water in the gouache i'm, I'm putting really thick pasty gouache on the palette mixing that and allowing the humidity to wet it a little bit more um, i used to struggle with that and I, i'd mix it the way i normally would and then by the end of the painting my whole palette is just a big puddle and my i've had paintings literally just drip off my board because I was just too wet basically. Um, so, you know, that's <laughs> definitely that's funny. part of gouache's idiosyncrasy. Um, I'd say the number one thing though, is the values change. That's like, that hits you like a, a truck when you're yeah, getting into gouache. It's kind of like I with think acrylics. acrylic does too, right? Yeah. Acrylic is yeah. annoying. It's, yeah. I think it's worse than gouache though. Okay. Yeah. That's tough because values as we know it, are so important. Right, maybe oh, the dude. most important thing in a painting, and they're really affected by um, it being a water-based media. When it evaporates, it, it changes the value. So, to me, that's one of the first big learning curves that you have to get over with gouache. And um, I, I feel like I'm kind of like 80, 90 percent over that. Like it's almost always going to be a bit of a wrestle. I think. Um, but there's, there's things you can do, you know, there's, there's value exercises that really hone your value control. Um, and I, I tend to think of value in, um, in a range of seven rather than 10. Um, so my, my sense of value is kind of chunkier and it lends itself to grouping value grouping. I mean, sometimes I only think of like three, like every time I put down a brush stroke, it's like, okay, is this mid light, mid dark or dark? It's one of those three, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. You know, I'm thinking that basic and I'm just trying to group my values into those. And then, you know, even if I'm close, then the painting works. You know, I can be you, off by 20%. You it's know, it's fun. really cool. Um, that's, that's, I mean, that's totally my, uh, that's pretty much what I'm thinking all the time when I paint is I try to keep it like, like three main values, 
and then when you mix in between those values, those are the additional values, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you know Sean Sheetham? He, no. I, I had him on my podcast like okay. a week or two weeks ago or something. He's you got to look him up, Sean Cheatham. Um, he's an amazing painter, uh, oil painter, and um, he's just he's just awesome. And um, years ago, I learned a really cool trick from from uh, just following him on I think Facebook or something. And uh, he did this thing that was so much fun and so cool. And I just started doing it when I started. I, I didn't really paint much with gouache at the time. I did mostly like watercolor and acrylic and, you know, was d dabbling with oils, I think, at that time. Um, but I saw this technique he did. It was so much fun. He like he was he would do these little gouache portrait studies in like in a moleskin um, and he, like a moleskin kind of like watercolor book. Yeah. And I. Uh, he would share these these little sketches, and they were just so beautiful and so cool. And I was like, "Man, I want to paint like that. I want to do stuff like that." So, but then then one day he finally showed pictures he took of the steps he did, and it was so cool to see it. I'm like, "Oh man, this is this is even more fun." I was just like, "This is so cool!" And right away, I'm just like, "I got to do this." And and it was one of the most fun ways to paint. It's it, and I do it basically every time I sketch with gouache now. And what it is is, you just he he would block in just like the basic values in just flat gouache, um, like three values maybe, maybe four, but mo but very simple. It almost looked like paint by number, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't like this amazing looking painting. Okay. But all the values are there, and when you mm -hmm. kind of step back, you're like, okay, wow, that looks really good. But it's like when you look at it, it's just very very basic. Yeah. And then what do you do? Well, then the, the next Sorry, step. This is Grayscale or color at this point? Um, bo both. Both. Okay. Either yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Either way. I'm with so you. then, what he would do at this stage is he take water and just pour it not not like a ton of water, just like a, some drips of water on the painting, and just kind of move it around a little bit. What? And all of a sudden, all the, all the paint kind of just blends together. What? So it goes from paint to number, and and what happens is the water starts to like do what watercolor does, and in certain areas it kind of disperses and blends, cool. and it turns and, into this like yeah. beautiful like image, what? right? And oh, then when man. and then when that dries, he would go on top and paint opaquely on top of that and tighten right. it up, right? And it and it just creates this, and so I I tried it. You know, just from seeing this few pictures, and and I ever since I just kind of play around with that, and it's so much fun because it's just it's. Is there it's, like video of him doing this online anywhere? No, he literally no. just showed like I, I. You know what? I can't believe I didn't talk about this when I had him on the podcast because I just didn't think about this. And you're the one. You know, we we're talking about gouache. I re, was reminded of it, but um, yeah, it, it's just it was literally just a couple pictures that he he. It was like two or three pictures he posted. And I, he could have been le le leaving out, steps, you know, some steps. I have no idea. All I know is, I was like, I want to try that, you know. So I started messing around in my my moleskin sketchbook, and I just did the same thing, kept it real basic, you know. And then just it's kind of scary, but you know, it's in a sketchbook, you know. They, they just pour a little water in there, and you're like, oh shit, this is cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's you're, fun. You're literally pouring a little bit of water onto it. Yeah, and just letting wow. the, the gouache just activate and just kind of blend. So yeah. that's why you keep it very simple, and it's just very much like yeah. it looks kind of like color by number. Like, yeah, like four, yeah. forehead is one value, the sides yeah. of the head are a different value. But that, I mean, that's a great approach, right? Like that, that is ala prima for sure. Yeah, and it, it forces you to be decisive. What what value? What temperature? Right, mm -hmm. and then it sounds like he's working the edges later in the process. That's really cool. I mean, man, I tell you, sometimes. I finish a painting and I look at the palette and I'm like, that palette is so much more beautiful than what I've done. And it's the, <laughs> the yeah, randomness, the, yeah. the relationships, the color relationships and, and just the randomness um, that you get is so beautiful sometimes. And um, I, I took uh, Mike That's Hernandez funny. workshop once. Um, you know that guy? No, I'm not Mike sure. Hernandez. I might know the work if I saw it. He's, um, he's a production designer at DreamWorks Feature. Um, well, I, I think he's one of the great gouache painters uh, working. And uh, so I, I went to a workshop of his on Whidbey Island in Washington State. And uh, it, I think it was the first uh, paint session where we were outdoors painting. And uh, I was hyper focused. And I was like, oh, I'm going to show him what I can do. And he came around and he looked at what I was doing. I was trying so hard. 
And I think I was kind of falling into an old rut of mine, um, which is um, being too tight. That That's kind of, it's always been something I've struggled with. Mm. Um, is being too rigid with my approach and, and not allowing for enough play to come into it. And um, he watched me for a little bit. He's like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. You mind if I try something? I'm like, yeah, go for it, Mike. And he's like, you know, I got a palette knife. I'm like, whoa, palette knife? I thought that was for oil paint. And someone lent him a palette knife, and then he just, like, moved it around my palette and took all this random color and he stared at my painting for a while. I'm like, what is he doing? And then he just went <laughs> like that and just like smacked it with the palette knife. And it just like <laughs> splattered a bunch of paint right in the middle. Um, and at first my ego was like shatter. I was like, oh my God, my painting, what have you done? <laughs> uh, and then 10 seconds later, I was like, and that's easily the best mark on the page so far. Like there's so much more life yeah. and vitality and interest, right? It doesn't look... Mm, so that's cool. Uh, um, uh, contrived, you know, and 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 man, that's a great teacher right there because I I feel like he saw my personal struggle and was able to show me the path out of it um, yeah. in one in one motion, you know. So that's awesome. the lesson for me there is like I I always have to look for an opportunity to play around a bit and and to uh, incorporate some, uh, spontaneity, um, and, and allow that it's, it's like, it's my, my wife's a, um, therapist, psychologist, and, and they, they talk a lot about control. You know, that's a big thing for human psychology is, is we really strive to feel in control. And to me, healthy control is self-control. Um, but we get into trouble when we're trying to control others and control, our surroundings and our environment, because of course we can't. Um, but if we've dealt with trauma in our lives, we are often um, resorting to try and control the situation to make us feel safe subconsciously. Yeah. Um, so, you know, letting go of absolute control and and starting to, I guess, maybe play jazz a little bit in, in some improvisation, allowing that to be part of the process uh, I think is really, really valuable and fun. So um, shouts out to, to Mike, man. You, you helped me with that one, one stroke of the <laughs> That's pretty funny. palette knife. Yeah. You know, he's, I've been, a, he's an awesome um, guy. I've been messing around um, recently. Well, I mean, I I had a, I got the iPad Pro um, with Procreate a couple years ago, and I, I haven't really spent tons of time with it. I just kind of doodled with it. Um, I really enjoy it. It's fun to take on trips. It's fun to... Yeah to hang out in my living room with my kids and I can still kind of sketch and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Um, recently I've really started to get into it where I'm like, man, I really like this. And I, so I, I started playing around with brushes and um, started really more painting with it now yeah. where I, I, I finally, I'm starting to feel comfortable with it where I'm like, yeah. I, because I don't know for the, for some reason, you know, painting with it just didn't feel right. Um, I, I couldn't find the right brush. And finally I found um, a, a couple brushes that feel like okay, this is this isn't I, this is my kind of feeling like okay, because I don't know it's 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 weird you know like when you move to something like that if when you're doing digital stuff it can just feel so foreign and it just yeah. it just feels so clumsy and clunky and and it, that's how it kind of felt a little bit um, when it came to the painting part but I'm finally feeling excited because I'm like oh yeah now it now it's now I can paint like this is cool um, and uh, the other day. This goes back to what you're saying about just like your palette looking more, you know, amazing. I I, I bought some gouache brushes um, from this. I think his name is Max something. Someone um, uh, referred me to him, and I made some really cool brushes. So I got some um, gouache brushes and some um, kind of like ink brushes and stuff. And I I just like opened up a new page and I'm just like just trying out this brush and doing different things with this brush and seeing what it does and then try the next one and the next one. And by the end of it, I'm like. Man, that is really cool looking. <laughs> it was just like this, you know, this chaotic mess of just texture and color and layers and everything. I'm like, right. if that was a, if that was like an eight foot painting, it would be like in the museum, man. Right. It, it just looked so cool. Yeah. And I was like, Pro Procreate's pretty amazing, funny. man. Like you, you're, we're definitely getting to a place now where it feels, it's starting to feel organic. You know, you're getting 
those happy accidents and the spontaneity yeah. in there. Um, it's amazing, man, for sure. You know, I, I love the way the brush works. I mean, just like how you, you it turns it around, it just moves and flows yeah. with it. And um, there's this brush. Um, it, it it comes with uh, Procreate, and I didn't. I just stumbled across it finally. Um, let me see if I can find the name of it real quick. Oh, please do. I'm intrigued. It's and ever since I found, it, I'm like, oh man, this this brush is freaking awesome. Oh, it's just called the the Salamanca or Salamanca brush. It's a it's S A L A M A N C A. Hmm. Um, and also, there's a turpen a turpentine brush oh, that yeah. I that I never messed with before, and I'm like, oh shit, this is really cool, man. <laughs> like, yeah. how did I not see this before? Um, and uh, so I've been having so much fun, man. Just like in between different things, just get on my iPad and my lunch break or whatever, and just start messing around. And uh, actually, some some dude hired me to do a kind of like a sketch, a caricature sketch of him. Um, and I should have been done a long time ago with it. Um, and it was supposed to just be a sketch, but then I discovered this brush and I started having so much fun that I got carried away with it. And now it's like way more rendered. And um, I'm oh, like, nice. oh, well, well, now now you're getting a way free upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Um, but it's it's fun, man. I'm really enjoying. It. And um, I also, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Fresco. I started um, messing around with the the, the, the Adobe app on uh, the iPad and so far the the pencil tools on there are my favorite so lately um, I just got done doing these huge advertisement jobs where I had to do these posters like really like 40 something inch posters um, and and then I'm doing a bunch of stuff for pop TV like kind of like movie poster type stuff for, for shows and I've been doing all of my sketching on the iPad with Adobe Fresco using the pencil tools, it just feels so natural. And and uh, people, I know people are like, why don't you just you if you love pencils so much, just do it all in pencil. But it's like, it. The reason this is so much better is because it's for a client, and I don't have much time. And you know, I can I can work so much faster on this thing, and yeah. I can I can make changes and edits. So Revisions faster. are so much quicker. And it just, but it, I love it because it just feels so much more natural than anything I've ever drawn with before. And um, the only thing that's that's lame is I wanted to like I haven't figured out if I can like work on something in Fresco and then somehow transfer the exact same file to Procreate. Like I've tried and I couldn't figure oh, it out. Yeah. Um, so, but anyways, what I've been doing is I've been sketching it all out on that, and then I s save it to my Dropbox, come down here to my studio, and then do the painting on my Cintiq. Oh, um, right. So it's it's been cool because. Um, Again, like a lot of the times when I'm, you know, I'm working all day, but then I got a job coming up, um, and I just take take this little magic sketchbook, go upstairs, hang out with the family while they're watching something, and I'm actually working on sketches for the job the next day, and nobody, it's just I'm just hanging out with everybody, and it finally feels to the point where <laughs> I feel like I can just like I'm making money right now. <laughs> yeah, so but fun. I like it. I like it because it's. Um, I mean, let's put it this way. This is really funny because, man, it wasn't that many years ago. It was like, um, I'm, I would say five years ago, maybe. I was in Germany. Wait, let's see. Yeah, I was in Germany. No, Austria, sorry. I was in Austria doing a workshop, and I got a, a call from Wacom saying, we heard that you were in, in Austria. There's a, a really huge tech, you know, con or whatever you want to call it happening in Berlin and we are testing a new Wacom product and we would really love for you to go there and they I'm like okay so they flew me and my wife you know over to Berlin put us in a hotel they didn't tell me what the product was what I was testing um, and they didn't give me any further instructions so I'm in this hotel in Berlin I don't know when they said it's going to be sometime during the week that I'm going to be contacted so I'm like hiring bikes and like riding around in Berlin, going to the art museums. Um, three or four days go by. I'm just like in Berlin, like <laughs> what? like like what's happening? And finally, I get a message saying, 
um, meet us at this restaurant tonight, um, and then we'll fill you in with what everything is going on. So it's like really strange. I show up at the restaurant, and they present to me in this like a really nice little Wacom case, um, this stylus thing, and they want me to go the next day at this Wacom booth and do a demo on an iPad, which I didn't have uh, one, um, and you know, and basically do a demo on this thing in front of you know it's going to project on a screen and <laughs> so I get this in the, now this is how this is how much this has progressed in like five years basically um so this stylus was a stick with a big rubber ball on the oh. end of it yeah I think I remember those things it was the worst thing <laughs> that was ever invented <laughs> and so I get to this place and here's the other thing there was no drawing program on the iPad, what they gave me an iPad, and the only drawing program was a, uh, it was like a note program, a thing for taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> That's great. And so I'm sitting there, I, and this is no joke. I start to do a demo. I'm starting to draw this guy, and I'm like, I'm trying to draw with this thing, and it's the worst thing. It's just, it's just you can't draw with it. And I'm trying, I'm trying, and all these people are watching, and um, maybe ten minutes in it, I go, forget it. Like this, and I go. Someone give me a piece of paper and pencil, and they some I, someone brought me a piece of paper and pencil. And I'm like, here. And so then I started drawing the guy with like a r real pencil on paper, and I'm like, this, <laughs> it, get it to be like this. Yeah. And then I will use it. Yeah. And, and so what I'm excited about now is it is that now. It is. I mean, it's yeah. like it's just awesome. It's like, and I love it too. It's so much fun when you're drawing. You just go boop and just bring it in, turn it, and just like, it's like it's a combination of like a minority report, you know, that Tom Cruise movie is like, whoosh, whoosh, like just so much fun. But yeah, yeah man, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's an exciting time we live in for sure. Are you doing a lot of uh, digital stuff? I mean, obviously yeah, with animation and everything. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm on a Cintiq at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what kind of stuff have you been doing um, with that, that side of your work? So I work for a studio called Stellar Creative Lab in Vancouver. Um, it's two and a half years old. I've been there two and a half years. Uh, it was founded by Bert, Bert Von Braun and Hasmi Ferguson. Um, Bert was um, a CG supervisor on Surf's Up and a bunch of big feature films. Oh, I love Hasmi's, that movie. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Uh, beautiful film. Um, and I like surfing, so definitely a big film, fan of that one. Yeah. Um, has me on the production end. She ended up, after decades in the industry, working with banks, um, bonding animated feature films. They started the studio together with this vision of doing things right, treating people really well. Um, they're awesome, and they hired really great people. So um, we do a, a bunch of things. We've worked on... Um, a couple feature films in the last couple of years, they're not out, so I can't talk to them, talk about them. Um, and then in the art department um, where I work, we've developed from scratch um, five visual development projects for DreamWorks. So mm -hmm. DreamWorks has um, television feature, but then they also have this other department uh, development and there's teams there. And they develop dozens and dozens of projects per quarter and they pitch those internally and the ones that get chosen turn into the next TV shows and feature films. So we've been working with them, um, developing stuff from scratch. Uh, so it's really, really fun, really, really creative. Um, it's often blank slate, like they have zero images. Um, you know, it's got to be cohesive with the DreamWorks brand. But, of course, they want originality as well. Um, you know, sometimes they'll have an IP, like, you know, a big famous IP that we're working with. Sometimes it'll be just a script or something like that. Um, so that's been really, really fun. Um, one of them went pretty far, and they, they kept hiring us to keep developing. Um, and it got as far as we did, like, a fully animated look-a-picture test. So it's like a 30-second, this is what the project would look like if it, was a real thing um hmm. and and i currently that is being considered uh as a feature film at dreamworks um i think i think that's all safe information i'm pretty pretty confident it is so you know of <laughs> course i can't talk about the actual ips or anything um but uh yeah i've been doing that and then 
That's awesome. One of the things that's really, really um, exciting about Stellar, I mean, all of this work that I just described has been great. It's been um, really, really um, creative, collaborative, um, really like juicy stuff to work on. Pre-production is so fun. Um, the downside is, you know, if it ever comes out, it's like three years away from anyone seeing it. Um, but it is really, really fun work. Yeah. Um, something else is going on at Stellar, which to me um, really separates this studio from most that I've worked at, most in the in Canada, um, and it's that we're developing our own content. So, um, you know, if there's any, if there's a free, you know, ten minute window during the day, um, it adds up, and and we've got two projects that we've developed from the ground up now. They're at various stages and, you know, we're working with production companies and it, it's not easy and it's a long shot, but at least we have some skin in the game of actually um, creating some content of our of our own. Um, and that that's been really, really exciting. Um, one that's of the awesome. projects. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super interesting. It's a, it's its whole own set of challenges, its own learning curve. Um, so, you know, it that. I always need to learn a lot in my job or else I feel I need to look elsewhere after a year or so, you know, and, and because of this, um, between that and the pre-production, um, things have been really challenging, which is great. Um, one of the projects was created by, uh, my friend, Anthony Danino. He was, uh, director of photography on the, um, my Little Pony movie. I don't know if any of your daughters are into that one, but uh, he's an awesome guy. He he wrote this amazing script, um, and that has um, moved along now. And we've had some writers' rooms on on that. And uh, I think I I can say it's a it's an adult animated project. So you know it's for grown ups. It's for late at night when the kids go to bed, and uh, that oh. that's really fun to work on. So I, you know I've got to art direct <laughs> that, that? And, and work with the team and. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's super fun, man. So yeah, that's what I've been up to for like two and a half years, pretty much. Um, can't show a single thing yet, but uh, I feel like <laughs> that day is coming. And uh, as long as the challenge is the right type of challenge and uh, robust, um, you know, I'm growing a lot, then uh, it's a great job. And, and that's exactly what it is. And that's awesome. And, and the, the founders are just their... Um, they're the type of people that just attract good people, you know, I think because they are well-intentioned, honest people, they attract those types of people. Um, so I just, I work with like 60 really nice people and, and that really goes a, a long ways. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, did you get this, did you ever get to see uh Klaus? Yeah. 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 Oh, Beautiful man. film. The Dude. artistry is just astounding. And the yeah. labor as well, like a, it's so beautiful. And then I, I just think about how laborious that medium of, of 2D animation is. And mm. I mean, just so much respect for everyone involved. That movie, in that. that movie caught me off off guard. Um, I was watching my two year old, and I was just trying to put something on real quick so she could be entertained while I was trying to do stuff. And I saw I was I saw the, like the little you know icon on Netflix. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. I'm like, what is that? Oh, check it out. Some kind of Christmas thing, but it looked cool. That's perfect. And I just put it on, and and I start like cooking lunch or something, and yeah. I'm like, like Hold all on. of a sudden I'm just like, what? What? This is awesome. Yeah. And I ended up just like watch. She didn't even watch it. She got up. <laughs> late. I just sat there by myself watching this movie. Like, this Dude, is so every cool. shot. Every Dude, shot is so good. The, the character design, the car everything. Like, yeah. Dude. Characters are remarkable. One of the coolest animations I've seen in a long time. Really, yeah, really. it's really, really great. It's I, I feel that there is um, a new movement of animation happening between Klaus and uh, Enter uh, the Spider Verse. Oh um, yes, it's an, that's, super dope. That's right, same with that. Yeah, that's it, that's funny. That's another one of those movies where everyone's talking about that movie, and I'm like, man, I don't know. It's like a yeah. Why is everyone going on and on about this animated Spider-Man movie right. when we've got when we've Until got the Marvel Universe? It. You know, the Marvel Universe. We've got all these movies, and yeah. you know, and you I know, was so sick of. And so it was heroes. just it was one of those things too. Like I was just like, ah, whatever. It's probably gonna be. Yeah. It's it's got a freaking pig character, <laughs> like like, and I love John Mulaney, so I'm like, oh, let's see what what you know he's oh, doing. I the do place. Too. He's one of my favorites. Um, and 
I uh, same thing. I put that on, and I'm like, this is one of the best superhero movies ever. It's so dope, dude. They, that movie's, just, movie's dude. so dope. Dude, yeah. speaking of uh, John Mulaney, uh, last week I was in New York, uh, yeah. and I was hanging out with some buddies, and we went to a comedy club, and we were out drinking and going to different places. Then we ended up going. Um, I have another friend, uh, Jason Chatfield, who he's a, a comedian, but he's also a cartoonist for The New Yorker. He does stuff for Mad Magazine. And he, he does, uh, does stand-up at the, at the cellar, which is like the, basically oh, the wow. biggest. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. with Louis C.K. and, yeah. you know, David Attell, all these different huge people. Cut their chops there. Uh, um, yeah, and he's like, why don't you guys come and well, – there's like a – there's a very famous restaurant bar that's above – I think it's called the Olive Tree. Um, and um, it, you see it in a lot of movies uh, about comedy and different things. Um, but anyways, we're like, oh, yeah, that would be great. I would, I've always wanted to go. I, I've never gotten to go to the cellar yet. Um, but anyways, we go there. We meet him. We go up there, and I walk in. We're walking towards the bar, and there's like all these like you know places where we can sit and eat and whatever. And there's John Mulaney just sitting there, um, and it was so cool because he was working on material, and you could tell he was frustrated. And um, he's sitting there, he's got his head in his hand, and he's like, oh, I just oh, and he's like writing in a notebook, and <laughs> and it and it, it was really cool because you could see that he was he's trying to work out an idea, and he's about to go up. He's supposed. To, he's about to go down and do a set. Oh wow! And it was just so cool getting to see that reality of yeah, dude. That, like that's the guy who's super famous, uh, and he's one of the funniest comedians. One of the but, funniest but, man. But he's still there grinding and like it working. Out. Dude, and it that's. Was, it was is, only a few moments, but I'll, I'll never forget how cool that was. You know, it's incredible. To me, yeah. that it that's the part of the painting where it could yeah. easily be the worst, and and you know even. I hear this from, you know, painters with decades of experience that like good painting, you, you go there, right? Like you get to that yeah. point, you're right on the brink of like, man, this is headed south real quick. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, it's so, it's so encouraging to know that the, you know, the greats experience that. And, it, and it's very interesting to know that creatives across many disciplines experience that, you know, and, and to me, awesome. There's something to that, man. It's like, it's not meant to be easy. We don't do it because every time we try anything, it's amazing, right? It's about process and, and we're addicted to the struggle, right? That, the, the pursuit and, and the dance and uh, like you falling know, down and getting back up. That's, you just like gave me a really good idea because like, it's like what you're saying is just like sex um, where we we all want to be really good at it um and it, it it's so good and it's so fun we love it but we're not that great at it but it doesn't matter because we just keep doing it we keep going for it because it's so good even though we're we are, we're still sucking but we're trying some of us are literally sucking but my point is is if people treated everything else like sex Right. Even though, even though you're not that great at it, but you keep going, that's just like, hey man, treat it like sex. You're not that oh, good man. at it, but you, yeah. you love it, right? Right. It's it's good, yeah. right? So keep yeah. going. Treat it like sex, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I have to... uh, there's something to that, man. There's something to that. I like it. But like but it's it. true. It's true though, you know, because yeah. it's like it's like if people if, if people you know, I mean, people will, will go do crazy things to be able to have sex, right? Oh. Yeah, like crazy I mean, things. It's the they, ultimate they'll driver. Pretend, yeah. they'll, pre they'll pretend to be someone they're not, yep. just so they so they can work. Now, imagine if you could take that into trying to do a good painting. <laughs> right. I, I mean, some there there are people, athletes come to mind, um, who really try and harness the 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 sex drive, as you're describing it, into you know boxing or like you know like you know certain boxers will not have sex before their match and you know, their, their sexual angst builds up and then they, you know, focus that into their aggression and like, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, that's the great, uh, biological driver right there for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. all about sex. Baby. Just paint like you're fucking man. That's, yeah, that's... exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Quote of the podcast, paint like you're fucking. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. 
definitely, definitely the quote of the night. Um, so as you know, uh, there's a few people that drew you. Uh, so I want to show you those real quick before we continue on. And um, just let me know if you see the screen. I'm going to share the screen with you. Hopefully there's not going to be any confusions here. Um, tell me if you see this. Do you see that? <laughs> you got it. You got it. You see it. <laughs> oh, man. I love this. Someone was drawing like they were fucking. Oh, shit. That's great. I've never seen my nose exaggerate. Look how, like, wow, this person's really, really good. This is uh, uh, Jack Lamonier, by the way. Wow, Jack, you're amazing, man. Like, the way like you caricatured is really very clever and sculptural. I love how he handled my mouth. That's amazing. That tie that I'm wearing um, is, is wood carved out of hurricane katrina rubble no way so, dude did you get it in new orleans yeah dude i have one just like it you I gotta got, be kidding me i got the same thing when i went there you and me both have hurricane katrina rubble wood yeah. bow ties yes <laughs> well not a lot of people can say that man i know isn't that cool <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> i have the same dude, thing this drawing is is incredible wow yeah, cool. i'm kind of blown away and we oh, just found out that we're Katrina Tie brothers. Yeah. Dude, New Orleans. Wow. I love, I love it. I got engaged there. No kidding. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome place. Yeah. Incredible place. We, My wife and I um, drove there with my brother when he graduated Texas State. So we drove from Texas to New Orleans, and, and that was one of the most fun times of my life. Um, Bourbon Street is the worst place on the planet. Yeah. That's Everything not, else about yeah. New Orleans is like the best thing ever. Their culture there is so incredible. Yeah, yeah Bourbon Street is can be so oh, terrible, so depressing and, oh. and terrible. Yeah, but yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing city. Well, there, there's well, some good jazz clubs on there though. But you have yeah, to, you just yeah, have to deal with all the annoying people. And... <laughs> it's because they, they allow everyone to to drink all day long. And, right. Uh, and uh, oops, can you see that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this is amazing. We were just talking about Spider Man. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh uh, wow. This one's by um Dominic Zalinger. Dominic, Zal you're hilarious, dude. It's so dynamic. I love that the paint's like going right at us. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like I'm pretty blown away right now, Jason. <laughs> pretty fun. Whoosh. Um, this one is, what? let's see, this is by Walid Shihab. Dang. Oh, man. Super stylish. Yeah, Dang, cool. man. Oh, almost, this is so cool. Almost, almost, uh, like graffiti-ish. Yeah. Cool. Wow, really <laughs> neat. Yeah, it's it's definitely got that um, some kind almost like an airbrushy. Um, you can see it, I could see this on the side of a building, kind of. Wow! Yeah, cool. right. I so wonder if this person does uh, graffiti as well. Possibly, their, their signature looks like a tag. They totally do. Look at that signature. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're totally a graffiti artist. A very good graffiti artist. You come paint this on the side of your uh, your building. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is by Lars <laughs> Eric Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Oh, that's amazing! Wow! <laughs> Look at the value control on that. It's really, really nice. Yeah, he did a good job. I love the lighting on the on my face. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's got my tattoo in there. Oh, that's so cool. I like how he he's slightly got your your cross eyes a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah, it's goofy. I like it. <laughs> you brought out the goof in me. That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Um, my wife encourages me not to take myself too seriously. I I, I think like I I get lost in thought a bit. You know, like I I think a lot, and I'm probably I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, yeah. So I you know I I tend to maybe like fall into seriousness. So this is great because it it reminds me of my goofy side and. <laughs> That's very valuable. Well, that's good. That's funny. Um, Whoa. 
Whoa, this, that's so cool. This is the the last one. This is Dwayne by Dwayne Stockton. Oh, I know Dwayne. Wow, Dwayne. So cool. It's it's ghostly. It's like I'm an apparition. Very, very cool. You know, it's funny. Like, this is so random, but it, it's it's this is what popped into my head when I just saw this just now. And and don't take this the wrong way, Dwayne or or Jesse, but to me, I I see this is like you as as a Bigfoot, um, like <laughs> like the uh, the forehead and the hair, uh, <laughs> like remind me of Bigfoot's head. And then the way that the head is angled and the way the shoulders are, it almost looks like you caught him off guard. You know, he's like, oh, you see me, you know. It's just oh, that's too good. Like I, I, it just looks like the pose, almost like you just caught him red-handed. Or oh, something. it's so good! It's Jesse and the Hendersons. Love yeah. it. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> wow! Great. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Dwayne's amazing. Dwayne's amazing. Awesome. And, wow. Uh, am I back? Cool. Yep. Okay. Cool. So yeah, that's awesome. Thanks everybody for uh, submitting that. That's really cool. Yeah, that's so cool. I've never experienced anything like that before. There's so much talent out there, and I I love. Okay. I, that's the best thing about social media for me is like being able to have access and and see all this talent out there, and and the pitfall is letting it overwhelm you or intimidate you. Um, but yeah. to me, I, I'm absolutely convinced that. If each of us pursues excellence, each of us will find and create opportunity. You know, the 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 idea of like scarcity of opportunity is kind of a myth with artists because every single artist, if they just get good, there'll be things for them to work on. And yeah. especially now with like content creation being where it is, there's so many platforms to independently make things and sell them to connect with your cons your customer base um so to me seeing so many amazing artists every day uh it's just really exciting and it, it's so fun to watch people get better at what they're doing and and to create such powerful work um, oh yeah so yeah it's neat to get a little slice of it uh focused on on my mug that's uh that's pretty entertaining <laughs> No, it's awesome, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to hang out and talk about this stuff. It's it's really cool. Oh man, and, uh, it's great! To I also with you. so I, I would like to encourage anybody listening to this just to, um, I mean, obviously check out um, Jesse's website, which is what's 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 a good website? WinchesterArt.ca. Okay, there you go. So check that out, and he's on Instagram also. Is it just just your name on Instagram, right? It's at J Winchester Art. Okay, so check it out and, and, and there as well. But also, try painting with gouache. Stop, close your digital pads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, obviously, keep doing it. But every once in a while, like, there, it, it's, it, it surprises me how many people I'm meeting now. And that's kind of like the new era now where people do not paint traditionally at all. Yeah. Um, but they're doing awesome digital stuff or they're struggling. But I think it's so important to continue to, to paint traditionally. And if you're not, if you haven't done it, definitely check out gouache, look at Jesse's work, um, because it's going to inspire you. And, and even if you paint traditionally and you suck at it, whether you realize it or not, you're going to, you're going to learn so much just so from many the benefits. So many times when you, when you're, when you fail at something, when you're trying with art, you know, you're actually learning, you know, yeah. and that, that's the thing that, I really believe big time in learning how not to do things. Totally. Um, and you're just going to get better. You know, the, you can't, you can't really succeed without failing. You know, that's totally. that's just the way it is. Um, yeah, so to, definitely uh, check it out. Can I, can I say real quick? To me, a really valuable concept is being aware of intake versus output as an artist, as a creative person. Um, for me, I was so focused on output for a long time. I'm always trying to make my next best image. Um, it's so important to input into your brain to study and to take in yeah. inspiration and knowledge and, and to find time to um, take in that, that inspiration, um, be it life drawing um, or plein air painting. Um, I'm convinced that 
it's crucial. It's crucial. One way or another, we need that time yeah. to absorb uh, our surroundings and, and formulate our opinion on it because, you know, then all the skill in the world, like, what's it for? What are we, what are we trying to do here? Right. We're trying to tell stories and, and, um, move people with these images and, and we need to, um, intake information in order to do that effectively. So yeah, try, try plein air painting, try traditional paint. Um, if it's hard for you to get to life drawing, you know, just carry the, the sketchbook with you and, and sketch people in, in the grocery store line and in coffee shops and, you know, just getting half an hour of that input a, a day will benefit your artistry. Oh, usually. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Gorilla sketching is the best. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, later this year, uh, towards summer, I'm going to release uh, an online tutorial of outdoor gouache painting. It's going to go from uh, total beginner, if you've never done it before, how to get over the initial learning curves of gouache and outdoor painting um, and then get into some intermediate stuff um, for anyone just looking to level up their their painting in, in general. I've got some pretty juicy stuff I'm, I'm excited to share and be working hard to uh, make that as helpful as possible. And I, I really want to release that um, for a, a very cheap price point, like $40 or, or less. Um, and just try and spread it around and, and help anyone uh, who's interested in in doing some gouache sketching. So, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I definitely, yeah that, thank you. That's going to be really cool. That's really cool, man. Yeah, good. Awesome. Good. Be on the lookout. For sure. Well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you you joining me for this. This was oh, awesome dude, catching thank you, up. Thank you, man. And, uh, and thank you also for your words of wisdom. Uh, and everybody that's watching this, uh, paint like you're fucking. All right? <laughs> All right, yeah. we'll see y'all around. <laughs> you want answers? 